Coming up, Trailblazers, a series that takes you into the heads and homes of trendsetters to get you a slice of their lives. Namaskar. My guest today is someone who was called the spinning girl. Uh, she was given this name because she danced Kathak with its myriad chakras all over the world and she managed to spin her way into everybody's heart. Uh, a wonderful teacher. She's uh, had many disciples and many of them are performers in their own right. But most of all, I think Kumudini Lakya is known for her novel interpretations of traditional Kathak. So we decided to meet uh, Kumudini ji in her uh, school, Kadam, which she started in 1967. And uh, here we are. So Kumudini ji, uh, going back in time, tell us about the major takeaways and the major lessons that you learned from your teachers whether it was Shambhu Maharaj, whether it was your collaboration with Ram Gopal, whether it was learning Bharat Natyam from Krishna Rao. I started learning Kathak when I was quite young. Um, I think I must have been about eight or nine when I learned with many different teachers in Bombay. And I didn't learn just Kathak, I learned Bharat Natyam, I learned ballet, and uh, Manipuri and Kathakali. Any class that my mother used to see, she would push me into that class to learn dance. Because maybe she wanted to be a dancer and, and was not able to. So she used to push me into all these dance classes. So I learned a little, little bit of a lot of dancing. And uh, later, uh, my father got transferred to Delhi from Bombay. And uh, she was worried about how would I continue my dance. So she took along a dance teacher with her. Oh. Yeah, a dance teacher and a music teacher for herself. She used to sing and she used to love to sing. Uh, so this dance and music thing uh, continued, continued in the house, you know. Uh, later, my father discovered that he had to keep moving. It was wartime and he was an uh, engineer and they were building a lot of uh, hospitals and barracks and schools for the army. So he had to keep moving. He moved to Lucknow, to Allahabad, to Dehradun. So what happened to my school then? So they decided to send me to a boarding school in Lahore. Then again my mother was worried about what about her dance. She was very keen that I should keep up my dance. So she sent us a teacher to Lahore. My God, that's really creditable. Yeah. I was in the boarding school and she sent the teacher to Lahore. And she built upon the principle to let me learn one hour, uh, three times a week. And then I came to Allahabad. I went to the agriculture college. Mm -hmm. I'm a BSc in agriculture. Yeah. I went to the agriculture college. And that teacher then started living in Allahabad. The teacher would come with me to Lahore started we found him a little home and he was living there and I was continue agriculture and then dance <laughs> after I finished my BSc I applied for a job which I did not get because I was a girl and I was too young and just at that time a friend of my father's one Komalata Banerjee she said would I like to go to London because Ram Gopal was looking for a dancer. And I said, yes, because I had nothing to do. I said, yes. Within a week, I was in London, in Ram Gopal's group as a member of the, his dance troupe. Then I never looked back. Then dance was my profession. After I came back, and then I joined the uh, Kathak Kendra okay. in, uh, in Delhi yeah. to learn Kathak properly. Yes. So what, would you say that was the time you actually got a special grounding in Kathak? It, that is right, yeah. that is right. And with Ram Gopal, what was it? It was Ram, Ram Gopal, I used to, I had, I had learnt a little Kathak before from my teachers. So that is when I got that spinning girl thing because I used to spin. Yeah. <laughs> and 
in Ram Gopal's group. Okay. There must have been lots of things that you learnt, uh, you know, subconsciously when you were touring and dancing. There. Yeah, lots. In fact, this discipline in dance, which I appreciate a lot and I use a lot in my work, I learned from Ram Gopal. Right. I would say that uh, with him, we toured the world. We saw ballet and Spanish dance and the Russian ballet. We saw Pavlova and, you know, so that is where I knew or learnt how to respect the, the dance and how, what dance means mm. to, to an individual. Right. You see, the dancers over there, I mean, dance was just their life all the time. They didn't think of anything else. And that is what I learned from them, from being with Ram Gopal. We went to America, we went to the Scandinavian countries, we even went to Poland and to France and to Spain. I toured with Ram Gopal a lot. And that is where I think I got the proper education of what dance means to a human being or to a dancer. Kathak I learned later, the, the Kathak, the proper Kathak right. from after coming back, yeah. I joined Bharti Kala Kendra in Delhi and I learned with Sundar Prasadji and also from Shambhu Maharaj. But I would say Shambhu Maharaj was my guru because, you know, guru, from the guru you learn not just the basics of the vocabulary of the dance, you learn the spirit of the dance, right. the Atma. Yeah, I would say of the dance, mm. which is tukra, uh, toda, anybody can teach you. Mm. Mm. Yeah. But the spirit of the dance, what Kathak really is, you know, how it is different to the other forms, mm -hmm. why it is different to the other forms, you know, the for instance, for instance uh, the the whole uh, the space structure, how it moves in space, how Kathak moves in space, you know. That I learnt at the Bharti Kala Kendra from Shambhu Maharaj. Otherwise, you will find dancers standing in one place and doing all kinds of dance which looks like acrobatics. But what he taught us looked like dance. What is the difference between just the body moving in different uh, directions and doing all kinds of clever things? Mm -hmm. hmm? And when is it that you will call it dance? Why is it that you will call, call it dance? Why? How is it different? If you find two bodies doing exactly the same structured dance, but the way one does it would look different. The way the other one does it would, might look like acrobatics. Why is that? What is it? It is the space around the dancer, which gets the energy from the dancer's movements. And that is where dance is created. Mm. That kind of thing I learnt from Shambhu Maharaj's teaching. Yeah, coming to that, uh, I wanted to know, uh, you have said in one of your interviews that after having got my grounding in Kathak, I started feeling that I needed to experiment and innovate and interpret that grammar my way. And to a certain extent, you thought that is it going to be just miming some words? So I wanted you to talk about this transition and how it happened and how did it get executed? I did not at that time, the time that I left the Bharti Kala Kendra and a lot of, lot of us were doing solo performances, you know. It was mostly solo performances always. And uh, we were dancing at music conferences or at different events. Uh, I did not appreciate the way I was dancing. Why is that? Because I was just repeating mm -hmm. what was taught. So I was like a photocopy. Mm -hmm. You know, I was not myself at all. I felt like I, like a jumping uh, animals, you know. I was just jumping here and jumping there and spinning there and spinning there. I was not after the performance, I didn't feel satisfied. I didn't get that uh, satisfaction which art is supposed to give you. 
So what was the difference between an artistic performance and a performance for the audience at which the audience claps anyway? <laughs> so what was the difference? And that is what I wanted to research in. And so I changed the whole system of teaching at Kadam. The whole system of teaching at Kadam. If this hand went like this, mm -hmm. I said, where is your hand going? Where is it? Why is it going there? It is going towards the Kshitija. Huh? And what does that teach you? It teaches you that it's never ending. The nearer you go, the further it will go. You know, that kind of. Whenever we did a movement, I tried to put a meaning into it. Where is this hand going? It's going into the infinite. What is the infinite? It's something that you cannot explain. It's never ending. You know, that never ending kind of thing got me. It sort of became a passion for me that I have to now find out what is in that never ending. You know, this is the first movement of Kathak. So that went to the horizon and that went to the infinite. Okay. You see, this is the first movement of Kathak, what we call thought. So I gave it my meaning. I gave it my meaning. Mm. We were in the, in the, Maharaj used to take, take, give us different meanings. Ki Guru Ashirva de rahe hai, ya Krishna Radha ka milan ho raha hai, or ya ye uh, Krishna ka jo more pankh hai, uska symbol hai. Mm. Hmm? But, I wanted to give it my scientific meaning. Kumudrini ji, just tell me offhand, yeah. say for instance you have some of these traditional uh, imageries, like flowers are blooming or yeah. you know, you're, somebody's pining away for the lover or something. Would you, as a, as a choreographer, stay away from these imageries or would you uh, sort of assimilate that in your production and if so, how? Yeah, I would assimilate. It's not that I'm against that. Now, for instance, birds and flowers, we have we have specific hand gestures. Yeah, exactly. So, so how would you interpret? So, so you flower. I that is what I don't like. You know, I don't like to uh, stay to the uh, to the words. To the words. Right. You know, flowers like uh, birds flying. Mm. Birds flying. I would show them just in the sky, show the sky and watch the birds mm. rather than show the bird, rather than become the bird myself, I would be the spectator and watch the birds. Right. You could do that. Yeah. Right. And you've also said that this uh, much of what you dance is abstract. It is not based on traditional stories. Uh, so if you were to uh, say, if there, there are lyrics which say birds are flying or flowers are blooming or the Naika is in great pain. How would you relate to it and how would you interpret it? See, why, why did I do... I, all my uh, first compositions were abstract. Why? Because whenever we were told to do some ballet or some story or something, it was always from Indian mythology. Right. <laughs> we couldn't get away from Radha, Krishna, Shiva, you know, Rama, Sita, you know, couldn't get away. So what I thought was, we are imposing our mythology on the dance form. Can't dance stand on its own? Is it not an art form which, can, which has its own feet? It, can, it always has to depend on mythology. So, no mythology. Let dance be dance. And that's why I did all this abstract. I did dhapkar. Dhapkar means the pulse. First, my first production was Dhapkar, Pulse, then Kolahal, you know, noise, you know, things like that. Um, Atahakim, that I've done three times. Mm, Atahakim means, where do where I go is. from there? That was, I always feel that. It's now, okay. where do? It's, uh, now, where, even today I feel that. Now, where do I go from here? Every time I have to do a production, I always feel, now, where do I go from here?
are now in Kumi Ben's office, which is where a lot of the activities of the school, which is Kadam, have blossomed from here. And uh, now the number of students is about 150, Kumi? 150, yeah. Okay. Uh, That's a more than 100 that I would like to <laughs> actually have. <laughs> so your uh, senior uh, students teach them? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I wanted to ask you a little bit about the East-West encounter that uh, you had participated in. That was very, very long time ago. Yeah, and was it the time when you had started experimenting with your Kathak? That's right, yeah. that's right. I did my first Atakim there. And uh, in the morning we used to have sessions where we used to have discussions. Did it help in any way? That I think it did. Helped uh, people who wanted to know why we were doing this. Right. Why was Chandra experimenting with Bharatanatyam? Why was I experimenting with Kathak? Why? Mm -hmm. So it did help a lot of the younger people. Mm -hmm. And I definitely know that it helped my students. Because after that, my students started experimenting, you know, like Daksha Sheet, Aditi Mangadas, Parul Sham. They all started experimenting after that. Mm -hmm. Because uh, they got a kind of, uh, you know, encouragement. Right. Uh, a lot of emphasis is on the way you hold the spine in your uh, choreography and in your dance form. Can you just uh, illustrate that for our viewers, specifically in a dancer male body and a dancer female? A dancer. It's, the spine is very important in a dancer's body. <laughs> How the dancer holds himself. You see, you have to have a lot of strength in the spine and around the spine, the muscles around the spine also. Now, suppose that a male is doing, uh, in Kathak, we, the dancer will play the part of Krishna and Radha also in a story, you know. Eka uh, Hari where we have to tell a story, you become Krishna, then you become Radha, then you become Gopi, then you become uh, different things. So when, suppose you are playing Krishna, then you have to hold your spine like that, with the shoulders going a little behind. With See, here the, the neck also goes like this. And the spine is also, see it's curved a little bit because it's going backwards. Now, when you play Radha or a woman, it will go the other way. the man and the woman. You have to distinctly uh, tell the audience the difference between the man and the woman. That's how the audience will look at it. I mean, if you hold Radha like this, she'll look awkward. Or if you have Krishna slouching like that, she'll look awkward. So, the spine plays a very important role in how you hold the body, the male dancer's body and the female dancer's body. Right. Um... You worked with Dhrupad, you worked with jazz, you worked with African drums, yeah. you've experimented with a lot of music. What is it, how do you, when you approach a new piece, uh, do you give the musician, the composer, a brief on the kind of work that you're going to be doing or is it something that evolves organically between the two of you or is it something that, you know, the, the composer gives you the music and then you fit the dance into it? It depends. It depends who you're working with. Right. Like if you work with jazz, I mean they play it their way. Yes. Uh, but so you would be giving know, a brief? As you know, I worked for many years with a composer called Atul Desai. Mm. Many years. Yeah. And there we would sort of share our knowledge. I would say I would like it like this. And he said, no, I think it would be better this way. And we used to have lots of discussions, sometimes fights also, you know. <laughs> about how we are going to produce this. And he was a great help. His music danced by the time, you know. Um, you produce something produce. together. See, his music used to dance. But, uh, for instance, I did Drupad recently. Okay. They are not going to change. They will keep it the way it is. You know, in it, they're very traditional. Jor, Jhala, Alap, Jor, Jhala. They are going to keep it like that. So I had to adjust. It was the most difficult task for me. 
to do it to the because it's so slow so mm. slow in the beginning and their alap goes on for so long so how many movements can you put in you have to so i had to create a lot of new movement patterns there are two or three uh, other important facets about your choreography one is uh, the gradation of color the how i design my costumes yes. i design my own costumes hmm. like i choose one color say i choose a brown then i go from yellow to the green brown to the blue brown to the brown brown to the red brown you know i i choose the different grades shades of brown and then when i do the choreography i sort of see now which brown will this girl be wearing so i do the choreography also with a little i i take little swatches of the color and put them around their neck so that i know which yes okay. in during choreography mm -hmm. so i know which color she is using and so i see that the colors don't clash or sometimes they come together in a way that they they themselves create a design mm -hmm. rather than the dancer the colors also make a design so when you were innovating uh, what aspect of kathak did you say this has to remain by way of telling the persons watching me that this is grounding this is a grounding in kathak okay. where and there might be certain aspects of traditional kathak that you wanted to do away with mm. so when you were choosing picking and choosing what is it that you said this has to remain yeah otherwise this loses the purity yeah. because a lot of people talk about this is not pure kathak this is, it's lost its purity yeah, yeah. or it's this is not pure bharatnatyam now when we talk about pure there is a lot of impurity also yeah, yeah. <laughs> first of all the stance how the dancer stands how the dancer moves how does the dancer move moves from the particular training that the dancer has had i did not want the um, very fast movements sometimes the dancers does very fast it looks like they are just uh, throwing their arms in kathak what i liked was you don't throw your hand you take it there kumi ben now we are in the room that looks at the future of your dance where all your students are working hard how do these uh, students of yours sustain their interest in dance and how do they later on go on to take it on full time and then professionally how do you inspire them Well, a lot of them uh, dance for the pleasure of dance, for being connected with the dance, and they do other things like they're engineers, doctors, okay. architects. But there are some who take to full-time dancing, professional dancers. There are some here right now. Okay. Uh, I don't know how they manage <laughs> because you see, the dancer's shelf life is very, very less—40, yes. 45, 50 at the most. and also the returns are not very good because you have a lot of expense of musicians costumes lighting uh, traveling makeup and a lot of other expenses and the returns are not so much people don't really pay unless uh, unless you have a you are on the tv or when there's a lot of visibility or the corporate world you know uh, but uh, um, they still they love the dance and they've taken it as a profession and they, they to earn a little extra they teach they go abroad where they earn they get a lot of programs outside india my dancers get a lot of programs outside india so that is how they make the two ends meet what about students in india how do they manage how do they sustain themselves financially mm, they have help from their parents or like my husband was telling me like you know yeah he bankrolled <laughs> well. yeah i didn't have to worry about where i'll get my next meal so i was able to build this institute with this beautiful institute which you yeah. see it's really quite unique mm -hmm. and um, every time i earned i put in this in the institute and made it for for the future actually what is a day in the life of kumudini lakya like a day Uh, when do you start and i get up at 6:30 i used to go for a long walk but now i'm not able to walk that much with my with the aging you know uh, with my two dogs and then i look at the garden a little bit cup of tea 
and newspaper very very normal kind of a housewife's <laughs> life go into the kitchen and see what's necessary and for today order the lunch then have uh, get dressed and come to kalam and that is where my life starts actually that around 10 in the morning yeah, at 10 o'clock i'm here and you're here till 1 o'clock okay then i go back home and by the time i go back it's 2 so we say 1 but we never leave before 1:30 quarter to 2 yeah. someone comes and meets us so telephone rings hmm. there's a message on the uh, net so then have a lunch rest a bit 5 o'clock i'm back again and that then the classes go on till till 7:30 so anything that you would like to tell our viewers as a parting gift uh i think that they should not just become photocopies but otherwise they will dance just like the teacher mm -hmm. not that the teachers dance badly but then you do don't want to become a photocopy of that person you want to be an individual dancer with her I realize it's not only about a particular piece or a tukra or a tihai she teaches you the relation of the entire body so everything from holding my spine to how to handle the torso while the breathe in breathe out factor so every, the presentation as she, as she always mentions her aesthetics so it's not only about dance we are completely groomed with her from head to toe I come here to uh, Kadam six months to just be around her and learn from her because it, there's no end to it. But uh, that that inner drive of like doing something on your own, whether good or bad, that doesn't matter. But that is also you know one very distinct line line of Kumi Ben is always there in my mind. Like you know, it's good to be a you know a bad original than to be a Xerox copy. You know, so I think that line really I always it haunts me most of the time whenever I challenge myself and. I think that was the the biggest challenge of my life to do something on my own because otherwise I was always pampered here. The association with Kumi Man is, uh, as far as dance is concerned, is very, very uh, intimate. She remembers each and everyone's names, uh, and that's I I that kind of uh, you know she's so personal with whoever comes to Kadam and everybody is observed and. uh in a sense uh, uh she notices everybody so that that in a way it gives you a lot of confidence for young dancers it is a most important thing and something very uh, magnetic about her that many of us who were studying computer science and mathematics we left everything uh, and started dance as a very passionate career um i remember i went to her when i wanted to be a soloist and she said Kumbhan, should I take up dance as a profession? Because that that was a period I was not very sure. She said, "The kitna kitna artist hai Hindustan mein? Pachis log hai? Pachis mein se ek nahi ho sakti tu?" So you know the kind of confidence she gives you, and uh, a small details about uh, when you are on the stage, how to present yourself, what should be the costume. Ek bhi dhaga idhar udhar hota hai, so she is very. Uh, you know very particular about it to refer to kumudini lakhia's contributions as being contributions only to kathak is a somewhat reductionist way of looking at her work the body of her work can be treated as contributions to the scene of indian dance she presented her dancers without trappings of excessive jewelry tinsels dupattas and all that um all of this went to present dance in its neatness she herself when she danced internationally as a solo artist or as part of the troupe of ram gopal had seen enough in the world of the elegance of presentation of the concerns with stage craft that is the kind of sensibility she brought into the dance she took it away from the showmanship and the glitter and the glitzy kind of stuff and the one upmanship all of which is built into the traditional repertoire of kathak